How you doing, everybody? Once again, this is on our Western rant. Um, this this rant is starting the the series entitled "The Law of Love," and this this first section of the series, I wanted to um, touch basis on defining the meaning of the law of love, and also I want to go into go into more of the detail about the rules of engagement of love. So, without further ado, let's let's get into this. Uh, first of all, the law of love. The law of love is uh, defined as this, and I got it written down. It's defined as the system of rules that are, that are enforced through a variety of different feelings, state, and attitudes within a social institution that governs the behavior. Once again, it's the system of rules that are enforced through varieties of different feelings, state, and attitudes within a social institution that governs the behaviors. And this um, social institution is basically be uh, summarized as this as a relationship or even a union as well. And that can be considered as a social institution. So we're, we're within this um, it's important for us to understand that we're within the one, the meaning of the law of love is that through these rules and through these rules, you know, that that's what corrects a different circumstance. In other words, that, that's what corrects the law, you know, and these rules and regulations are no different from governing, you know, the law of the land or even, you know, on biblical terms about the, about the law as well. And stuff, you know, and within my one introductory rant, I was um telling y'all that when well, when you when you actually live a life according towards law instead of grace and stuff, then what it is you you held yourself accountable of that and stuff. Now I also want to state too that if you are trying to live your life according to these standards, I also stated that there ain't nothing wrong with doing it. But however, when it becomes it becomes a situation or a problem when you try to force these things not only to yourself but to other people as well. And that there will lie some controversy behind it. So this particular thing, even dealing with the law of love, is no different. Um when, when when you be part of these relationships and stuff, then um what it is is that you put a rule and regulation, uh no put a standard in the relationship. And therefore, it becomes a law. Then, then the number one thing that happened within the law is that once when a person mess mess up, one of, um, once when that person step out of the parameters that you have set, then it normally leads to to something very di disastrous. A disastrous relationship would normally ends up with um, if you're a boyfriend or girlfriend, you'll break up. Uh, husband or wife, you end up getting a divorce. You know, as simple as that. Even in friendships, you know, um, if a friend step out of the parameters of a set uh, law or rule pertaining to the relationship at hand, then you know you won't be friends no more. Um, I now research and I and I uh, been studying that many of these uh, these this law, the law of love. It, it mainly um, manifests itself through, through a lot of conditioning and programming. A lot of these uh, conditioning and programming uh, comes from, you know, a variety of sources from media, um, you know, through a whole lot of different sources, which, you know, I'll get into later on during this um, series and stuff. But but they, they, they come through through a, a lot of different sources and stuff. So, so it could... Um, I mean, it, it, it can range through different uh, type of aspects as well. So, yeah. So, let let's get into this rules and engagement, which which I find very interesting, very intriguing as well. Now, when when I'm talking about the rules and engagement stuff, I'm talking about um something that other people we we refer to as courtship, um, others they don't refer to as courtship, you know, where wherever you refer refer to it as it's still the same thing, you know. So let me um go into details about the rules of engagement and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna show you how how uh, accurate it really is and stuff. Uh, first of, first off in the rules of engagement, 
um, then you have something that's known as a basic meeting or a meet and greet. This uh, meet and greet could be considered, could also be considered as a first interview. Matter of fact, let's let's think about it from um, you know from a business point of view. Um, well, when you go when you go in um, a platform a job, the very first thing you do is that you go fill out an application for employment. And the application of employment is basically a written document or a written contract uh, that that you sign in stating that you agree to these certain regulations or these certain standards. You know, they ask you some basic questions on the application. They ask you, what's your name? Um, well, what is your name? What is your address? What is your phone number? You know, uh, even going to details about what's your social security, um, um, well, what's your employment history, Does, uh, you know, how long you've been working at a job, do, do you got a certain type of skill set, this basic stuff on the application that they ask. Likewise, when you um in the rules and engagement, when you go go and meet a person for the first time, these very same questions be asked so without the, the social security part, but um, these same questions be asked too. The, you ask each other, what is your name? Uh, where do you stay? Uh, well, how long you been in a relationship? Uh, you know, for for you know skills and experience purposes. You know, um, then. You, you, you ask uh, those basic general questions. That's to really get a feel of how this person is. Then from that point on, you decide whether if you want to take them to the further step of the interview process. Likewise of a company, uh, once when they review this application of employment, uh, the, the, the human resource manager, they'll review it and they'll make the decision based on their feelings. You know what I'm saying? Not, in, in, uh, I, don't, I don't want to talk to human resources managers and been through um, seminars and workshops and they tell me the very same thing is that they don't base they don't base the um uh, selecting the person for an interview based on what's put on the application per se but it's based on they feel of the application how they feeling about this certain person you know uh, if they feel feel you know this could be a pretty good candidate then they'll stamp it as approval and go further into the interview interview process Likewise, when you meet a person, stuff you do the same as that thing. You you get a certain feel for a person. You like, well, this dude here, he's playing games, so I'm so I'm a curve him, you know, and that's what you do. Or this this woman, or uh, she ain't talking about nothing, so I'm a curve her, and that's what you do. And that's our part of the end of the first level interview process. You know what I'm saying? Which is what I'm calling the rules or engagement. Now, the second part of the um. Uh, the, the rule engagement process is this: is that um, once once when you go um, go through the interview process with that person and you initiate getting each other phone number and stuff like that and stuff right. The next process that you do is that you go through a second interview and the second interview is this: is that you end up um, talking to each other on the phone. But in this generation now, you know. Uh, we don't do the do the talk on the phone thing no more. What we do, we text. So um, you go through the process of texting this person, probably for about you know a couple of weeks or whatever. You you go through the process of texting, trying to get a feel of this person and stuff, right? You know what I'm saying? But what you're actually doing, you're actually setting the first, setting the second level interview. The first interview is through the initial contact and getting the number, not to fill out the application, or whatever. The second level of contact is when they actually, you know, ask some basic questions uh, through text, through text or whatever. You know, you ask them like, you know, hey. Um, uh, so, well, what what are you looking for in a in a woman, or you know, what are you looking for in a man? Then also, you know, ask like different questions, like um, um, you know, um, how many person, how many people you slept with, you know, just different stuff like that in this second level interview of this. You know what I'm saying? So after after when you go through this stuff, right, then it'd be the the next and the the final level, as I call the the final interview. Now when now, um, through most corporate companies and stuff, right, they let you go through three levels of interview. If they're a really, really good company, you go through three level interviews, as I'm stating. You know, it's the basic uh, application process. Then it's actually when they do an either telephone or a Skype interview. 
then the final process is that when you when you meet for the final time at a, at a certain setting and stuff, you know what I'm saying, in the company, they'll, they'll set you in a room full with um, managers and, and uh, you know, even owners and stuff like that. And they'll ask you a series of different final questions so they can get a final feel and see if you are the actual perfect candidate uh, for that company, you know. So likewise, in, in the dating scene, that's what it is. The same as like way. It'd be a final interview. The final interview is what we call a date, an actual date, where you actually go out with this person. You sit down and you really, 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 really get in, get in the feel of this person. You really, really um trying to see where their mind is at. You know what I'm saying? Trying to see if they um see if you see if they they have a connection with you. Uh, which later on through this um, rant series, I right, was explained to me though about connections as well, but. For, for now, you know, they get a connect, you get a certain connection with them, you have a certain feeling for them, um, then it's going pretty fine, you you know, y'all laugh, you talk, um, uh, you begin to relate to each other, you know, strengths and stuff like that. Not bad stuff yet, and stuff, but the actual strengths of each other and stuff. Then, then from that point on, um, um, after the date, you know, traditionally after the date, um, you know, you go out, you know, you'll probably hold hands or, you know, you'll do certain stuff like that. They finally walk each other to the car or if it be a nightcap type of thing, you know, you go through your nightcap process depending on what type of date it is, you know. So that, that in turn is the, um, the rules of engagement of the law of love. Now. Throughout through, through this entire thing that I was um, explaining to you is that just like I say, everything is being governed by by a certain level, a certain law and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Other relationship that I want everybody to become consciously aware of. You know what I'm saying? That we all do this, and the reason why we do this is that, like I say, we are being programmed to do this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, through different levels. So my my time is on way up. Uh, so. I'll go into more details again about um, going further details about the law of love. So until then, uh, and I hope y'all done learned a lot out of this. And by faith with faith, and I'm always praying with y'all. Goodbye.